Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to When the Night Comes. In the last episode, something certainly came. There was so much smut, smut galore, and it just, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it went on for way longer than I thought it would. I was very awkward. Um, and it seems that at some point, uh, Camille and August moved up to the bedroom. I'm very glad to see that they didn't end up sleeping on the couch. I wake with a smile. I bet you do, Camille. I bet you do. It's a strange new feeling, a lightness. My heart now beating in tune with another. Early morning sunlight pushes through the curtains, painting the room in a in a, excuse me, let's try that sentence again. Early morning sunlight pushes through the curtains, painting the room in gaudy splashes of gold. I sit up, almost not remembering exactly how and when we found our way upstairs and into their bed, but the space beside me is empty when I reach to seek out their warmth. Hello. Uh, what was it? It was H. They, they are so pretty. They really are so pretty. I rise up onto my elbow, searching the room, and I relax when I see them sitting at their desk. Their hair is loose, cascading down their back in silky ombre waves. I remember the way it felt snared through my fingertips, the way they felt beneath them. They turn in their chair when they hear me shift, a lazy, beautiful smile upon their face. Their cheeks are still flushed from sleep, and the robe that they wear leaves little to the imagination as they meet my appreciative gaze. Good morning. Good morning to you too, August. They truly are a sight to behold, and there's something undeniably different about them. A freedom, a lightness. They now know how worthy they are of being truly loved, and to love in return. Oh my- <laughs> Not again! <laughs> I'm gonna do it, but... <laughs> it's so soon. It's so soon after the last one, you can't- Game! Why? Why do I keep punishing myself? I reach out a hand to them. Come back to bed. It's too early for work. They avert their gaze with a coy smile. Their cheeks painted the most delicate, subtle shade of pink. I actually wasn't working. I was... Never mind. No, I want to know what you were doing, August. What were you doing? <laughs> they stand and move to join me beneath crumpled sheets with the little persuasion required. Their skin is still sleep warm, the dreamy scent of lavender still clinging to them, and I pull them close as they settle by my side. We lay in blissful silence and there's something so painfully intimate about this moment. There's the warmth of the rising sun that continues to seep through the curtains, the house so peaceful around us. Then there's the syncope- I thought that said sycophanted and I was like, that's not a word. Then there's the syncopated rhythm of their heart, something filled with promise. I would give anything to stay like this, to not have to worry about what today might bring. As if they can hear my skittering thoughts, they look up at me. Do it. I tuck their hair behind their ear and press close, brushing our lips together. August's kiss is almost too much, a desperately needed thing, almost too perfect to truly be real. And yet, it is real, and they're mine. 
They push into the kiss, and I dig my hands into silvery curls, the silk-soft tangle making me smile. The seeking drag of our tongues morphs into something urgent, as if both of us long to chase away any thoughts of us having to tear ourselves from this slice of heaven we've created. I tighten my grip, and August gracefully plants themselves in my lap, their eyes wild and bright as they smile down at me. We have time, don't we? How much am I going to have to read? Yes, General, we have time. With a quiet chuckle, August kisses me again, and I lose myself in the drag of their blunt nails against my bare skin. I'm quickly transported back to last night, to all the ways we pushed and pulled at each other, and it doesn't take me long to get back there. God damn. I hold them close as if I never mean to let go, everything else melting away around us, and then... The door opens! Oh no. <laughs> oh, Piper. Piper, I'm so sorry. Piper, I am so sorry. Okay, I'm calm. I'm calm. I still wish I could do a Cockney accent, and I just can't. Is Camila where- Oh, holy shit! And Piper appears. August groans, muttering something inaudible under their breath as they gracefully dismount, wrapping their robe closed. I thought you were good at pounding things with your fists, Merriman. Try it on a door sometime. Piper's j Piper's blinded. Piper is just like, I'll never see again. The shit-eating grin that crosses her lips says it all. Her brows raised in visible shock. Her eyes flick between us, and she politely clears her throat. Did I miss the memo about a team meeting, or...? August turns to stare at her, and if looks could kill. She snorts, covering her mouth. No? Okay, well, uh, I'll just let you get on with it then. I sink a little lower in the bed, pulling the sheets over my chin to cover my smile. Get out! <laughs> oh, of that! Just go, Lee! Oh, August. Another snicker and Piper steps outside, clutching the door handle. Good to see you awake, Camille. With a waggle of her brows, she disappears. We should... Yes. August, just like, we will never speak of this ever again. I'll just... Yep. As they move to get up, I curl my fingers around their wrist, urging them to look at me. I love you, August. They exhale sharply, cheeks darkening, lashes dipping. It's almost as if they can't quite fathom that those words pass between us so easily now, and neither can I. But it feels right, perfect, even. I love you too, more than I could ever convey. Oh, my heart! They step away, staring out of the window and over Lunaris. Make sure your robe is closed. Don't flash the neighbors. I can see headquarters from here, its silhouette looming high over the crooked houses. August frowns and clears their throat, fingers idly fiddling with the edge of their robe. I want you to know that we're in all of this together. That no matter what happens today or going forward, I've got your back. You've opened my eyes to so many things. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. To know I have an ally like August. Someone who holds such a position of power within the Enforcers and who is inexplicably good and honourable. I couldn't possibly be more grateful. We'll change it. All of it. The corruption could run deeper than... I swallow the word, his name, 
and August closes their eyes, knowing what I was about to utter. Then this. But we'll get to the bottom of it. They smile, but it doesn't quite reach their eyes. I always thought that becoming an enforcer would mean that I was serving the greater good. They'd come to my parents' academy often, and all of the students would be so excited. My parents would talk about how prestigious it was to be chosen, and yet... They scoff, their hands balling into fists at their side. When I announced I was leaving to pursue a career with them, they were furious. As if it had all been a pretty little lie. Like they knew they were rotten. To be fair, I don't... I don't necessarily think August's parents were furious with them because they were joining the Enforcers. I think they were furious because they were leaving the Academy. Because if, if you don't remember, um, there was a Codex entry talking about August's parents and basically they're like, they're kind of like witch purists. So how witches are made, basically when a witch makes a baby with a human, just a regular ass person, then the likelihood of that child having magic is very dramatically decreased. It's only like, if, you, if a witch gets with another witch, then it's like 100% guaranteed. However, witch and a human, mm, that's kind of like, no one really knows, could be, could be a witch, but more likely to be a human. And that's why August's parents hooked up. They, they were specifically like, like, I want to produce a witch child. You are also a witch. Let us make da baby. Like, they weren't, presumably they have affection for each other, or, they, or at the very least, they like each other. But that wasn't the reason why they hooked up. They married and had August because they were expressly trying to produce a witch child and presumably they wanted August to become the next headmaster of the academy and so them saying oh I'm gonna go be an enforcer they were kind of like well we we raised you with this goal in mind and you're no longer doing what we want you to do that's why that's why I would think they would be so disappointed in in them because they weren't, they weren't following orders anymore. But I didn't see it like that. I just thought they were cross because I wasn't fulfilling their fantasy of taking over from them, of becoming bitter and miserable, stifling my talents to teach those with too much money how to perform pathetic tricks. They should have told you if they knew. August hums, their shoulders sinking. As I suppose. But they were always too blinded by wanting to scold me for wanting to be my own person. Must have slipped their mind. That I might actually need them to be honest with me. I step close, winding my arms around their waist. I promise you that we'll fix this, no matter what it takes. August smiles at me covering my arms with their own as we sway together in a gentle embrace. Oh, I'm being selfish, aren't I? You just found out this world-changing thing, what they did to you, and here I am, groaning about my parent. I laugh, pressing a kiss against their jaw. We're both having an identity crisis, it's quite alright. Yes, well, at least we have each other. Come now. We better get ready. Boo. Then a wink. Something playful and delicious. People will talk. <laughs> August presses a kiss to the tip of my nose before they head for their wardrobe, gathering an outfit for the day. I glance down at their desk, spotting my name written in an elegant, looping script upon a piece of monogrammed parchment. The page is only partially visible thanks to another blank piece that's been placed atop it, but... August wasn't working at all when I awoke. They were writing about me, about us. 
To feel loved is to be reborn, and to love is to finally live. In her, I have at last found a home. Oh, that's so lovely. I'm really, I am so happy that I went with the uh, the August romance. I really like August. The next few days felt surreal as I relayed my encounter with James to those who most needed to hear. The revelations were met with both shock and horror, but mostly anger. Unsurprisingly, we all found ourselves with the very same question, heavy on the tip of our tongue. Why? I can't deny that the world we live in is a terrifying and uncertain one, but it's all that I know, all that I have known. Finn tells me that even before the Revelation Day, there were unexplained disappearances, murders, grisly things found but never spoken of. Corruption is inevitable in organisations such as this one, but for something so profound and nefarious to be going on right under our noses. I can't help but wonder if the ends justify the means in this little scheme that started in the brain of our leader. The cost is so high, the loss is vast and heartbreaking, and exactly when does it end? Where does the line get drawn when the divide between what's right and wrong is so very blurred? Would it have been safer for us all to live in ignorant bliss all this time? Or would they have overrun us eventually anyway? Maybe, but these are the cards we've been dealt, and Harold Addington has a dirty hand. I'm still biding my time, trying to gather any final scraps of information while I wait for word that Harry has reappeared. As I do most days now, I walk the town from one end to the other. Lunaris is easy to patrol, as small as it is, and the townsfolk almost seem relieved when I pass by. The enforcers have become such a suffocating presence here lately, and every time I encounter one, I can't help but feel like I'm being watched. Are they all in on this? I'd... I don't think they're all in on this, but I think a lot of them are. I find myself in the woodland at the edge of the graveyard. The sun shining, but the air crisp and cold. The grass crunches beneath my boots, and I see a path of dev of Devastation and destruction are very, very similar, but not quite. The grass crunches beneath my boots and I see a path of destruction as I walk into an open clearing. Anyone else would be alarmed to see the destruction I find, would likely suspect a creature had been the one to carve jagged welts into the trunks of the trees, but... I know what caused this, and it was certainly no creature. I find her a little further in, kneeling in the dirt, her head bowed. Beside her are two pieces of what was once a training staff, cracked down the centre. I approach quietly, and when she looks up, I see a blankness in her eyes, her expression sour. Piper? She forces a smile, her chest heaving with laboured breaths, sweat slicking her flushed skin. Camille? She hauls herself from the ground, kicking aside the splintered wood with a grunt. Then she retrieves two intact staves from a bag nestled in a pile of overgrown grass and holds it out to me. I know you've come to talk about deep shit, so how about you humour me and let me kick your ass while we're at it? I keep my gaze fixed upon hers as I take one of the staffs from her. So cocky. Piper shrugs, nonchalant, and definitely cocky. You know I'm right. 
Our staffs meet with a sw- with a swallowed. I'm so many tongue fumbles today. I do apologize. Our staffs meet with a solid thwack. Those sapphire eyes meeting me head on as Piper lunges forward with a grin. She's hyper focused, strong, and I match her blow for powerful blow with ease. Why are you out here? There's a training room back at headquarters. Piper rolls her eyes, wiping sweat from her brow with the back of her hand. The less I'm around those traitorous idiots, the better. I cannot hold my tongue as well as most, you see. Mm. She launches herself forward again, and I have to step back a few paces when she pushes against the pressure of our crossed weapons. I lose my purchase against, against the muddy forest floor, skidding. And then she's drawing back, swinging again, again. Shit. I'm used to one-on-one -on -one combat, used to the intricacies of it. But Piper is no creature, and it's been a hell of a long time since I sparred with one of my own kind. Her staff makes a solid arc towards my legs, and in a vain attempt at darting out of her way, I find myself falling in an inelegant sprawl. The world tumbles until it reorients itself when I land on my back, my head tilted back to see Piper standing above me with a far too smug smile upon her face. The hilt of her staff just barely grazes the arc of my very exposed throat, and I weigh out my options very carefully. Gotcha. Oh no, we... Camille does not accept defeat, we keep fighting! I seize the moment, taking advantage of her smug satisfaction. I swing upward with my staff, the angle terrible but not entirely useless as it serves its purpose, hitting hers out of her hands. I jump up, brushing dirt and leaves and whatever other crap lives in the Lunarian forest from my trousers, watching as Piper holds up her hands in defeat, her chest heaving. She eyes her staff, but it's too far away for her to reach. Do you yield? Piper steps closer, closer, taking my weapon in her hands and shoving. She scoffs, but her tone is playful when she responds. You got lucky. Hey, luck is all I need. Don't set Willenheim on me now, will ya? Oh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think, I think Camille is very happy setting Willenheim on herself, but no one else. Never. I laugh at her and she drops her hands. Playtime over. She pauses, eyeing me warily. So, what did you actually come here for, then? You've been avoiding me. Piper purses her lips, averting her gaze. She has been actively staying clear of me since the day after I woke up, but I've given her space and respected that the things I divulged would be difficult for her to swallow. Maybe, maybe she's just traumatised. <laughs> after seeing Camille and August, maybe she's just traumatised. But as time drags on, we draw closer to a point where we'll all have to face this corruption. And well, I need Piper. The only other hunter I can truly bring myself to trust, but most importantly, my friend. It's almost time, you know. At least, I hope. She pokes the dirt with the toe of her boot, as wonderfully defiant as she always is. I know. Want to get it over with, right? He'll crawl out of whatever hole he's scurried into, and everything will burn. Mm. Her eyes are fierce and bright when she finally dares to meet my gaze. Not everything. What he's done. She scoffs again, anger rolling off of her in messy waves that break over me, almost leaving me breathless. If I have to kill her, if she became what Azazel did... I will tear the Enforcers to the ground to avenge her if I have to. 
Oh, I, I'm not gonna lie, I do kind of ship Piper and Aya. I know the game has said that they were just friends, but I'm kind of like, I, I get the feeling Piper might have wanted more with Aya, but, you know, their relationship never got the chance to blossom because Aya was taken. He better have a really good fucking explanation for all of this, you know. Oh, he might sympathise. Nothing could excuse it, condemn. Oh. Oh, I'd... Oh. And... I'm gonna go with condemn. Because I think that matches... Camille's personality. She has been very horrified by all of this. And I think she was really... I think she was really upset finding out that she wasn't as human as she thought she was. You know, finding out how she had become a hunter and discovering that... One, they're doing this to children, but then Harry's taken it a step further and he's doing, like, a second ritual that's turning people into monsters. And we we don't know how many times he's done this. We don't know how many times, like... Like, I, I guess what I'm getting at, like, maybe he made the potion, gave it to a hunter, and that hunter just died. Like, they didn't become a monster or anything. They just straight up died. Like... We don't know if that happened, and then with Azazel could have been, like, the first time, like, oh, no, it lived, but it's a big fuck-off monster. And then we'll try again with Aya. No, it's still a, still a big fuck-off monster. Um, like, we don't know how many people this has happened to. And I... Here's the thing. I don't think Camille has yet realised that that's why she was brought here. I don't think she's realised yet that she was to be Harry's next monster, but I'm... What I'm kind of going with is, like, in her gut, she has this really bad feeling. She can't put a finger on it. She doesn't have words to explain it. It's kind of like, you know, like when you know something bad is about to happen. You can't say why you know, you just know you feel it in your gut. And you leave that location and then later on the news you hear that like, oh, there was an earthquake in that area and you're like, oh shit. Like, thank God I listened to my gut. Thank God I left. Like, I get the feeling that's what Camille is feeling right now. She, I don't think she has any sympathy for Harry. He's in a position of power and he abused it. At the same time, like me, the player, I'm kind of like, is, because I know there are multiple endings to when the night comes. And so I'm kind of like, is one of them a, you know, like, oh, we're going to fight Harry and we're going to fuck him up. And then the other is like, we join him, which I I can't see Camille doing at all. So like, I I just find that very interesting. I, I'm probably going to replay this chapter just to see what kind of endings there are because I, this is chapter eight and I believe there are only nine chapters so the next chapter will be the the finale but yeah we're, we're gonna condemn how could he he's killed people his own people his husband indirectly but still imagine that i can't i can't imagine it i think about august Knowing with everything I have that I could never hurt them. I love them too much. It's unfathomable and he'll pay for it. Fucking right he will. Then her shoulders slump and she slowly looks around at the mess she's made of the clearing. I... I should go. I need to clear my head in a way that doesn't involve beating the shit out of trees. Or me? Nor you. I'll see you around, yeah? Without so much as a second glance, Piper turns and disappears into the forest. I understand why she's hurting so much, and I just wish I could help. In speaking to Harry, maybe I can. 
And you know what? I am going to end off right here. In the next episode, it appears we are heading to the Ibeck. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.